today we have a very uh, special and amazing uh, guest dr sangeeta so a very quick introduction of dr sangeeta dr sangeeta completed her mbbs and md in pediatrics from kasturba medical college she has 14 plus years of teaching experience and currently ma'am is teaching in ramaya medical college ma'am has 8 plus research publications to her name she is also a very well known and appreciable faculty of moocs platform okay of which i uh, i am a pediatrician i have done my mbbs and md i should told from uh, kmc manipur okay and i have been working uh, as a medical college faculty for the last uh, almost 16 years um okay so i would i'll introduce the topic uh, introduce the subject to you okay i'll be telling you a little bit about uh, pediatrics okay so this is me and uh, along with teaching and patient care we also are involved in research so i have a couple of research publications also to my credit i'm also interested in developmental pediatrics and i'm uh, i have a i'm a certified trainer in bailey's uh, scale of infant development okay which is a developmental screening tool okay so what we'll be what i'll talking today is uh, what is the importance of pediatrics in mbbs uh, importance of competencies based study in mbbs course uh, books that you should be referring uh, in this subject okay and uh, what are the benefits of mock uh, mock online online sessions and my teaching methodology and weightage of the subject in mci and usc okay so uh, what is pediatrics now pediatrics is a final year subject okay so uh, in first year you get all your basic sciences and second year you get all the free uh, para clinical subjects so pediatrics was uh, initially part of medicine but from almost i think uh, somewhere uh, from 97 uh, or something from uh, 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 1997 it was made into a separate uh, subject okay so uh, pediatrics now has its own uh, curriculum and uh, it's a separate subject by itself it's a final year subject okay so uh, pre and uh, okay so what is pediatrics you would want to know uh, you, pediatrics is a specialty of medicine which is concerned with the physical mental and social health of children from birth to young adulthood okay so what people think is uh, pediatric is just a short uh, a smaller form of adult medicine that is not the case okay pediatrics is a completely different subject and uh, why it, is it so and why is it so dynamic there are so many aspects of pediatrics which you don't learn in adult medicine okay like we have uh, growth and development because this is the only age uh, like pediatrics is the only age group when children grow okay adults always stay constant the weight doesn't increase their height doesn't increase their head circumference doesn't increase but in pediatrics we deal with a very uh, changing group uh, like we we deal with newborns who can be as less as one, as less as 1 kg in weight to adolescents who can be as uh, you know sometimes even obese and be 60 70 kg okay and uh, that's why we have varied problems newborns have their own set of problems infants have their own or uh, diseases when it comes to adolescents we have a uh, different set of issues so there's a lot in pediatrics okay and also there are there is there are things like growth and development like we have we study how the child grows right from uh, newborn then infancy toddlerhood okay to under 5 and then become a middle school age and then go into adolescence so that is something which only pediatrics uh, it teaches you and development like developmental milestones so you would see, you would if you see a newborn newborn would just be lying around from that stage to when he starts turning over sitting walking it's a very interesting uh, thing you know development which again is exclusive only to pediatrics you don't learn about that in medicine or surgery then again comes nutrition because you know there's malnutrition and there is obesity under nutrition as well as obesity so nutrition also is an aspect which is uniquely to pediatrics immunization there are lots of vaccinations which are done in the pediatric age group okay so again immunization compared to adult adults don't have so much of vaccination uh issues in them but yeah we have we deal with so many problems of uh, like the uh, patients come with missed vaccinations so and uh, there are so many vaccinations there so that itself is a very uh, a large topic for us to read and know okay and as i said children have their own set of problems like the diseases that are there in children are totally different from what are there in adults we don't see myocardial infarction okay similarly we don't see all those uh, diseases like stroke okay even if we see stroke in children the etiology is totally different 
stroke in adults has different causes stroke in children has a totally different uh, reason behind it and the diseases are also totally different from what you see in adults okay and uh, uh, so what you have to remember is child is not a miniature adult the principle of adult medicine cannot be directly adapted to children because children have a unique biology their physiology is different body composition is different there are distinct risk factors of pediatric diseases the disease spectrum itself is different the clinical manifestations of disease also is different like urinary tract infection in, even in the pediatric age group if i say uti in the older child would present with fever and burning mituration whereas uh, an infant would just present with fever uh, crying while passing urine or may not even be that it might be just high grade fever and vomiting okay so the disease manifestations are totally different in a child many disorders are unique to children like genetic disorders okay thalassemias because they present in pediatric age group by the time they are adults it's already known and diagnosed so they don't have anything to do. but uh, the first time the presentation is at 6 months of thalassemia so so and so many genetic disorders there so many syndromes that we come across okay so genetic disorders are diagnosed in more in children than in adults okay and uh, changes in body composition from fetus to adult is quite different children's metabolism is different they have a faster metabolism drug doses are different all our doses are calculated per body weight unlike adults who have fixed dose so for us we have to see the weight height and then decide on the dose of drugs okay the fluid caloric intake is also very different from what it is in adults again everything goes by body weight okay and uh, they have higher proportion of body water child's response to disease and treatment is different okay children deteriorate very quickly okay you can't uh, like you know say okay i'll come and see you tomorrow the child is sick it has to be seen today the child doesn't give us time okay so uh, i just wanted to emphasize that pediatrics as a uh, field of medicine is very very different from adult medicine okay so now what is the importance of competencies based study in mbbs course okay so previously uh, previous, uh, to start with pediatrics was not even a separate branch okay it was uh, part of medicine it was only when i actually started my undergraduate and uh, under graduation it was then so i remember sometime in 97 or 99 pediatrics was made a separate uh, uh, course okay so separate subject okay so but now it has even it's changed for the, the entire curriculum has changed from 2019 mci has announced that it has to be a, a competency based ug curriculum and uh, you are going to be the third batch okay so 2019 was the first batch and that batch right now is uh, just going to start uh, fifth term okay so they finished two years that's the first batch so uh, for us also it's a very it's a learning experience in my institute also because uh, this is the first time that we are coming across like we are managing this competency based ug curriculum previously it was just didactic didactic lectures and the uh, students used to come to pediatrics only from sixth term okay and that is on final year and uh, we had lectures for them theory classes only in the last term but uh, now this present batch has already met us once uh, in uh, the third term so uh, and has come to pediatrics but uh, the other basic sciences like medicine surgery they come right from first year so what is the uh, reason behind this is they want clinical exposure they want you to learn uh, clinical exposure right from uh, when your basic sciences is be being taught so when you're taught anatomy physiology and biochemistry that time itself like why are you learning about the anatomy of uh, forearm or anatomy of heart they want you to learn uh, at that stage itself uh, you or uh, they want you to correlate it with uh, adult diseases okay like when we did mbbs it was just uh, we just had clinical significance and that was it but uh, for you know you're going to go to uh, the patient side uh, deal and interact with patients and this really helps because what you uh, remember what you learn in anatomy you're going to integrate right away with uh, uh with the adult diseases and with patients and uh, because you're going to get more of clinical exposure you will know more about patient counseling how to deal with patients what is the doctor patient relationship okay so definitely it's a very uh, good step so focus on clinical exposure right from first year mbbs and the focus is on learner centric and patient centric outcome oriented learning so initially it was all teacher centric we used to take lectures and students just had to passively listen okay but now it is focus is on learner centric so the uh, the shift is uh, the focus of instruction from teacher to the student and uh, the objective is that the learner sh should become more and more uh, independent and the student will be more active and responsible 
okay so all with all this it's just going to like you know uh, make you remember things more okay and focus is on integrating subjects in organ system based understanding so initially we had our own curriculum and we used to teach pediatrics based on what we felt was important in sixth term and what we felt was important in ninth term but uh, that is not the case now we will also be integrating with medicine and with basic sciences so if you are learning about uh, say uh, heart or in the physiology if you are going to uh, uh, learn about the kidneys in physiology you will also be taught uh, you'll also be taught about uh, the uh, nephrotic syndrome a little bit you know or whatever pediatric diseases are there in the renal system so that you learn everything together so medicine also will be talking about the same organ at the same time uh, pediatrics will also be talking about the same thing surgeons will also be talking about surgical causes of that particular disease okay or surgical aspect of that particular disease so so that everything gets integrated and you learn about one thing as a whole instead of just learning about you know some subject here and then coming to pediatrics and again learning about that subject so everything is going to get integrated and you're going to learn everything together okay and uh, replacement of rote learning with fun fundamental concept based knowledge instead of just learning what uh, what is being taught and just taking notes you will your fundamentals are going to be very uh, strong okay because everything is getting integrated at a very early stage and the focus is on becoming good doctors and not great exam writers because you're going to get more exposure you're going to see the doctor patient relationship you'll also have be having i think classes on counseling of patients okay so that uh, when you come out of and uh, yes the aim of there's some aim which is there for the indian medical graduate is that you have to become a wholesome doctor okay there's certain uh, there's something about it so you should uh, that is the aim of the uh, of changing the curriculum so what are the books that you will be referring for pediatrics now uh, op ghai essential pediatrics the ninth edition is the uh, is like the book which is generally given uh, recommended for undergraduates okay op ghai is the uh, book is quite to also mean is quite extensive especially cardiovascular system is very well explained so this is what generally students refer other than that there is also an iap textbook of pediatrics that also some things like i think cns approach to neurological diseases is uh, quite well given in iap like localization of cns lesions is given very well in iap textbook of pediatrics then uh, actually the bible is nelson textbook but it is very big it's a huge book and uh, certainly will not expect uh, undergraduates to learn about it but yeah if you want and you're interested you can definitely go through it if you're uh, there will definitely be a library attached to wherever you uh, study okay so nelson textbook of pediatrics is a is like our bible for pediatrics we have to refer but that is also very concise for each sub specialty again there are lots uh, sub specialty of pediatrics again there, there are separate books so as in when we see cases or when we take seminars we refer to them but for undergraduate level ghai and iap is more than enough uh, for neonatology is a separate uh, branch but uh, op ghai covers a lot of it but there's also pediatric clinical methods by mehrban singh which also gives uh, uh, concise uh, information about neonatology okay then uh, uh care of newborn again by mehrban singh is a i think the, I, the same book okay then cloharty by uh, it's again a manual of neonatal care again that is for uh, uh, uh like higher level uh, not for undergraduate this is sorry this is pediatric clinical methods this is not neonatology because you will also be coming to a pediatric bedside and you will be taking uh, cases for that uh, hutchison is the book which is given for medicine but uh, pediatrics also some uh, some aspects of uh, clinical examination are different so mehrban singh uh, pediatric clinical methods and there is also one clinical methods in pediatrics by uh, piyush gupta those are books there's something like hutchison basic method a basic scheme of examination is going to be the same uh, uh, like uh, any like medicine only but then there are certain uh, variations for that you will have to do some uh, pediatric uh, clinical methods book so for that those two books are quite good piyush gupta and mehrban singh okay otherwise op ghai for theory aspect is more than sufficient so uh, benefits of mock mock uh, online sessions so they are all uh, top faculty from first year uh, of mbbs and this all live online coaching so from the comfort of your room you can uh it and all these uh, uh uh classes and gain a wealth of information from varied faculty okay 
uh, during our times we did not have we had to attend classes and we could not uh, listen to somebody who was not there in our town so now i think with technology it's good that your uh, uh, like you can sit at home and even if there's a pandemic you continue studying okay so live online coaching learners are there from different countries and uh, doubt solving there's also a doubt solving support system so if you have doubts you can always reach out to us okay and there's unlimited validity for learners and how do we teach now um, uh, lecture based like there very various teaching learning methods okay so lecture based or didactic lectures are always there but um, again that is old school like definitely it can't be done with but uh, along with that now we also use problem based learning okay so problem based learning is you uh, basically give a case scenario and you see how you go about it okay so that is one way in which uh, we teach sometimes and small group discussion especially when there are practicals so when you come to a uh, pediatric bedside uh, uh, in our hospital we divide you into small small groups and so that you take uh, the case and present it and you know small group discussions there'll be more uh, uh, you know a teacher student uh, ratio so uh, otherwise because big, big classroom uh, attention cannot be given so when you do small group discussions even definitely when you, you do discussions your uh, retention of what you read also increases then there is self directed learning also so we uh, tried this in our place like we gave a case scenario and uh, we made uh, the students itself uh, open the books and come to the answers so when you do that when you open books and when you read about it yourself it definitely retains much more than what we say okay uh, passive learning is uh, definitely uh, i mean that doesn't retain much if you listen to what i say you may not remember tomorrow but if i say something i say you go and read yourself i'll give you a scenario i'll give you some questions when you open the book and you search for it i always feel when you go through 100 books you definitely come into the answer you read so many other things and definitely your knowledge base really increases so that is self directed learning okay and uh, right now for neat and next coaching we do mcq based questions because ultimately when you pass out and uh, when you are trying when you are preparing for post graduate entrance it's all mcq based so we mean it's mcq based it's very different from writing a long uh, question answer uh, you know uh, writing answers to questions because there will be specific questions and you have to know the correct mcq otherwise you don't get marks when you're writing a, 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 a question instead when you're writing a long essay or a short essay you can write so many things you know round about and you know sometimes it may not be exactly to the point but you still get in, get end up getting marks but in mcqs you have to be very clear about what it is either you know the answer or you don't know you can't you know beat around the bush so uh, when we talk when you do this uh, uh, neat and next coaching we, uh, we uh, discuss based on mcqs so uh, the discussion will be more based on how the mcqs are framed and like what exactly uh, should be the answer so these are the different ways in which we teach okay so weightage of pediatrics uh, usml and neat neat almost uh, 15% i think is uh, given to pediatrics so definitely pediatrics and even if it is not exactly uh, directly related to pediatrics sometimes questions are all integrated you know it, uh, it, it can also be part of pathology they might ask you uh, a question which uh, uh, that a uh, two year old comes and what is the pathology of that particular or what uh, is going to be the uh you know biopsy finding or they might give you the biopsy finding and tell you what is the uh, diagnosis and what uh, is the management so uh, like now uh, right nowadays the questions are changed now they're giving scenarios and they're trying to you know uh, use a uh, lot of aspect like use a paraclinical aspect also so uh, your knowledge is tested on all the aspects not just pediatrics so like that the weightage is uh, will definitely be more it may not there'll be some overlap between the subjects okay so uh, that's about it okay so somebody wants to know a few details regarding pediatric cardiology okay so uh, okay so in pediatric cardiology now unlike uh, adult adult cardiology deals more with ischemic heart disease okay so in pediatrics we deal more with uh, again congenital heart disease so we have cyanotic congenital and acyanotic congenital heart disease until some time back we also had a lot of rheumatic heart disease okay acquired uh, the uh, acquired heart disease like rheumatic heart disease and there's also something called kawasaki disease so those are the things uh, those are the things you uh, we deal about in pediatric cardiology 
So there are lots of books, uh, books also. There's Neon Park, if you're interested in pediatric cardiology. And it's very interesting. Like there is uh, a ventricular septal defect, atrial septal defect, there is TOF, there's cyanosis, cyanotic heart disease, and uh, lots of interesting heart diseases. Okay. So pediatric cardiology has both congenital acquired, more of congenital. In acquired, there's uh, Kawasaki and there's rheumatic. But rheumatic heart disease now with um, better hygienic living conditions and better treatment options, we are not seeing much of these rheumatic heart disease. But definitely we don't see much of, we actually don't see at all. We don't see ischemic heart disease. We don't see MI. Okay, we don't see uh, all these adult diseases. Dude, operating on unborn child. No, uh, there is something called pediatric surgery. But uh, that is uh, post-surgery, like you do MS general surgery, and then you can specialize in pediatric surgery. But we don't operate. Us is a totally uh, medical branch. It's not at all, nothing surgical. For doing pediatric surgery, okay. so, surgery. Uh, because she's answered this question very wonderfully, because that's a real question coming up to the students that... Uh, Anybody else? Simple with unborn child. So, uh, because uh, pediatrics includes children, so you know, everybody is uh, very concerned. Yes, cases also, any uh, particular some uh, cases that have come across to you, which was difficult and like, you know, something. Yeah. Okay, this is okay. I didn't get you. It's an un unborn child. Okay, unborn child uh, is again, it comes in fetal medicine. Um, and it is done, it is again not done by us. Uh, any surgery is not done by pediatric, pediatricians, uh, except for minor procedures like, uh, you know, putting an ICD or, uh, you know, doing a cut down. Otherwise, no. Uh, what is the difference between DCH and yes, I think you want to say yeah. MD pediatrics? Yeah. So basically, uh, yeah, well, what is the difference between DCH? DCH is basically a diploma in child health and MD is a doctorate in pediatrics. So uh, MD pediatrics is a three-year course and there is thesis, okay? And uh, whereas DCH is a two-year course and uh, uh, there is no thesis basically. Otherwise, uh, when students come, uh, like postgraduate students come to us, they all taught alike both DCH and pediatrics. Um, but just that the DCH, what they say is that the questions are slightly easier. And uh, even in the Viva for uh, when you when they're passing out, uh, diploma students uh, are given are not very. Uh, I mean, they are not very strict. Like MD pediatrics, um, the question level is supposed to be slightly higher, uh, and the questions, the theory papers also supposed to be slightly tougher. But um, I think now, um, and the other thing is post DCH, generally uh, you don't get admission. Like you can't work. I mean, uh, you can work in medical colleges, but a promotion and all becomes a problem. So, like uh, this was initially with MCI. Now, with uh, uh, the uh, thing changing from MCI to NMC, things are changing. Okay, even uh, they are accepting DND, they are accepting PD, MD pediatrics, um, like that. But uh, everybody can practice uh, whether you are MD or uh, either post MD or even post DCH. You can always open your clinic and start practicing. But uh, well, DCH has lesser scope of uh, scope in medical colleges as of now, but things keep changing and rules keep changing. Of course, MCI has now changed to NMC, so now it depends on how they uh, like what rules they make. But so I, I have question regarding the what is the difference exactly between the DCH and pediatrics, right? So any other students with any other questions because uh, like knowing about the specializations and then uh, taking it as a career, you know, having the uh, further uh, the complications and all, like you could just throw a light upon like more specifically about the pediatrics because which we usually happen to know is, you know, pediatrics are talking about the small children, you know, treatment about the small children. So it would be, so what other uh, Complications can you share with that uh, the students like other than the taking care of them, you know, which we've been hearing about. Uh, complications uh, in uh, uh, pediatrics. Yeah, the tactics uh, because it. Uh, I didn't get you, ma'am. 
like pediatrics about uh, talks about the small children right completely treatments like uh, so any complication complicated case that you have come across you know where it was really hard to resolve and then it's that some you know you and it's like a case study which you can discuss about right? oh we come across so many cases there's so many times that we don't uh, you know uh, sometimes don't reach a diagnosis because medicine ultimately you know uh, there's so many things like even right now as i talk to you there is one child who is admitted in our pcu who came with you know acute uh, onset of uh, uh, like she came with generalized body weakness and respiratory paralysis almost so now uh, treatment and she came with a very bad pneumonia and had to be ventilated now that the and she's a big girl she's a 16 year old girl okay so now she's on ventilator and she, it's almost been uh, close to two weeks two or three weeks and her body has all uh, uh, her limb weakness has improved and she's able to move her hands she's able to write uh, but the only thing is she is not able to breathe on her own okay so we did a tracheostomy because we didn't want to keep her on ventilator for so long all her tests her mri her mri brain spine uh, and we uh, tried to rule out other diseases like gulen bear syndrome um or like which uh, which is supposed to cause uh, this this kind of acute paralysis that was also negative so many times they give benefit of doubt like even if it comes negative we still go ahead with the treatment we still give her iv immunoglobulins and even um, uh, now as i talk to you also she is still i mean now she's kind of better but we don't know what was the reason for her uh, you know respiratory muscle uh, paralysis for so long and she is pulling on and uh, she is actually better since the last two days and uh, they had taken her to saying that uh, you know cost is an issue and it's been so long and ventilation and all that so she went to andhra by ambulance and she did not like that place and the doctors and the nursing care and she came back the very next day so she's been with us almost for two three days but there are so many cases uh, i mean it's not just in pediatrics in medicine in general there be so many interesting cases that you see and you know which uh, prove so much of a challenge to uh, you you know it's uh, uh, i mean that is when you really uh, you know put on your thinking hats and try to see what exactly it is you read up about it even now after 15 16 years i still open my book go to the library and see uh, or like what uh, what have i missed or you know what uh, when you come across these interesting cases you know you keep reading it's a lifelong learning process when you come into it Okay, there must be one thing. Must be the students that they must be uh, the in particular. They must be uh, pally with some doctors. Must not be wanting to treatment from the doctors, and that also behavioral issues also probably have to be taken into uh, the consideration, right, ma'am? That can a cardio surgeon operate on kids, or does he has to be a pediatric cardio surgeon? A cardio surgeon can operate, but uh, definitely pediatric cardio surgeon would be better. so uh, see that's what there are more and more uh, specialties like we have an orthopedician now an orthopedic like even if you say surgeons surgeons can operate on anybody but there's a specialty like pediatric surgeons so they specialize in doing that so it doesn't mean that a surgeon can't do appendectomy on a 10 year old he can do but the smaller the child uh, you know those blood vessels are very small on, and all those tissues are very small so that finer aspects uh, of uh, pediatric surgeons will be better but it's not that surgeons can't do similarly ortho, uh, orthopedics has uh, like so many diseases we have club foot and we have uh, developmental dysplasia of hip which orthopedicians operate but uh, now uh, there is somebody in our college who has gone and he has done like now they do fellowship so he's done fellowship in pediatric orthopedics so now he takes care of all the uh, uh, children with orthopedic problems so we can definitely do i mean you don't have to be a pediatric cardio surgeon a cardio surgeon also does but if it's pediatric cardio surgeon if there's uh, somebody who's available then it will be handed over to him it's like that so can we do ms in pediatrics there is one so yeah you can cannot do that's what somebody also yeah dbs you have to decide whether you want md or ms you want a medical branch or a surgical branch so all uh, like md it's md general medicine whatever is non surgical is uh, md so md medicine md pediatrics md dermatology is all md whereas anything which is operative uh, no sound i hope i audible no of course you are audible ma'am can you just okay. pick up the uh, network yeah issues because we are completely audible she's audible ma'am okay 
so or, and if you want a surgical branch then you do ms like you can do ms in general surgery ms ophthalmology so ms uh, you know uh, like that so all surgical branches go uh, are ms and all medical branches are md and then uh, the thing is when you do ms general surgery the, then there's further specialization you can do neurosurgery uh, cardio cardio uh, uh, cardiovascular surgery okay vascular thoracic surgery Okay, vascular surgeons like that. So that those are further specialties: urology, plastic surgery, all those are uh, pediatric surgeries. It's you do it after MS surgery, and after MD medicine you can do cardiology, nephrology, uh, neurology. All those are uh, super specialties of medicine branch. MD pediatrics till now was not there, but now in MD pediatrics also people go ahead and do pediatric nephrology is there, pediatric endo is there in uh, certain cases. I think. Uh, it's then St. John's in Bangalore and some few places uh, are there or you can just do a fellowship in endo or fellowship in developmental pediatrics, fellowship in pulmonology. Okay, so either you do pulmonology, either you do a fellowship or you can do a further uh, super speciality in all these broad specialties. So ours is all told broad speciality. Which, which post-graduation will have post in the next four years? Exactly, this was my question. Next question is uh, Loki Capital. What is the yeah, what is the scoop or uh, which is the which very much in trend now currently or going to be in trend rather that for the uh, super specializations in pediatrics? See, uh, in in pediatrics, you're telling, or in I think he's asking just uh, post graduation. So, uh, actually, radiology has been quite in uh, uh, like all the top rankers go to radiology for quite some time now. Okay, uh, I mean, uh, for the last 10 years, I think people prefer taking radiology probably because, you know, you don't have much of, uh, uh, I feel, uh, less of patient contact and uh, it's well paid. Uh, uh, I mean, and, but definitely uh, what is going to happen next four years, I don't know, but definitely pediatrics has a lot of uh, scope, like pediatrics is amongst the uh, top subjects which go, medicine, pediatrics obstetrics and gynecology but definitely to quite some extent it depends on your uh, aptitude and what you like you know so uh, like it's only when you do mbbs and then you, during your internship more than mbbs when you when you come to the clinical side your final year and when you do internship you know that's when you realize what you like and what you don't like there are so many people who after pediatrics have told ma'am we are never coming back to pediatrics it's very difficult to deal with a crying child and to get his cooperation so some people just you know say that uh, this is done you know when they pass the pediatric exam they say never going to come back here but then there are so many people who just love that subject and you know they come back and they go and they specialize and i have seen my own undergraduate students who have gone and done super specialty and they've come back so in pediatrics it's just what you like uh, more than seeing what is uh, the scope will always keep changing. I mean, it depends. Like nowadays, there's so much of violence on doctors. I think people want to be uh, take a branch which uh, deals less with patient and patient attenders. So I think radiology is in uh, uh, is quite much quite a lot in demand. And uh, but medicine, pediatrics always are the top uh, subjects which go. And even when it's management seats, uh, pediatrics is quite high on the list. Like people pay quite a lot. Uh, again, it depends if it's a girl. People uh, like. Uh, uh, girls prefer taking obstetrics and gynecology because they'll be interested in that, whereas boys prefer orthopedics. But nowadays we've seen, uh, like in this batch, some two, three girls. Uh, girls have also taken orthopedics, and there are a couple of boys also who are who have taken OBG in this year of uh, postgraduates mm -hmm. who joined us in 2020. Uh, on MBBS abroad, I think I counselors will uh, get back to you because this is subject related. So please ask questions related to that particularly. Okay, there's one question coming from Satyam Charasia that ma'am uh, we have to do ms and specialty in surgery how much time does it take so uh, any post graduation takes three years so ms will take you three years after that uh, uh, mch is what they say mch is another uh, three years so ms and then M mch of both three three so six years in between if you uh, it also takes an mbbs is five and a half years and uh, this is all if you get things in the first attempt. But if you uh, do it in a government college, you get good stipend. Okay, so you don't really have to be dependent on your parents. So uh, post MBBS, once you do uh, when when your internship starts and when you start working as a resident, 
junior resident you get paid also but definitely all this is a very very long process it's uh, if you want to specialize and you do mch it's another 3 years 3 years of ms and 3 years of uh, mch also but you can also see uh, options like uh, some places have direct uh, like i think dnb if you are uh, very sure about what you want there is direct dnb in uh, super specialty also like there is direct dnb in neurosurgery in certain places in nimhans you don't have to do ms and uh, do this thing, uh, do mch i think it's a five year course that time but it still saves one year but again it's difficult to get so you can do direct dnb in neurosurgery but again like as she said you can ask me what about pediatrics this is all what i know uh, about uh, uh, surgery and all that but uh, yeah uh, there are options you have to see uh, you can do direct uh, but there, again there are only few things if you even pulmonary medicine has a direct uh, uh direct md course there's emergency medicine there is pulmonary medicine there are lots of courses which have been added in the last few years i think ma'am much uh, more in trendy like what are the careers kind of coming up right now or the super uh, like uh, how we talk about the orthopedic surgeon like a sports and medicine is coming up right a uh, very much in trend so uh, the same way uh, with pediatrics like what is it like geriatric medicine okay what is geriatric medicine i think this is generally with done with the adults right the older people yeah, older age group geriatric yeah. medicine geriatric medicine uh, okay. i think again for, uh, this is also there i think like post uh, i mean you can just be interested and do it or i think there's a course also there's fellowship post uh, md like uh, as far as i know yeah it's definitely a separate branch i think it's post uh, md general medicine but we definitely uh, nothing to do with pediatrics this is the other end of the spectrum we okay. deal with the with small ones geriatric medicine is uh, the other end yeah it's almost for the older people yeah for the older people it's older age group then yeah, what are the hours the pediatrician has to work for i mean how many hours like <clears throat> how many hours the pediatrician has to uh, work, i mean what are the working hours for a pediatrician like usually very hectic or like uh, long hours yeah. for exact yeah it is definitely hectic and long hours like i told you pediatrics uh, they don't wait you know so uh, like uh, uh, i mean you can't say if somebody comes with fever you i can't uh, say come tomorrow and i will see you the next day uh, one thing is because the attenders will be so anxious and the other thing is uh, you know the Uh, patient also uh, like they deteriorate in no time so uh, so if i don't see they will go somewhere else and see so uh, show the themselves so uh, definitely it's more of an emergency and when a uh, uh, when a patient is admitted especially in icu there's a lot of monitoring we do like you know for patient uh, 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 pediatrics is a lot based on monitoring like i can't just uh, say or oh, give a medicine and go away when they admitted there's somebody who has to keep monitoring the vitals the uh, you know the heart rate respiratory rate there's uh, a lot of monitoring which is required in pediatrics so it depends on how how many hours depends on how busy you uh, choose yourself to be i think it's always like that like if you want to be busy you can work all throughout the day there are pediatricians who work till 11 o'clock in the night they have private practice which goes quite uh, it depends on the season obviously so if it's a very busy season and uh, like infections are going around uh, patients come to uh, i mean i've seen doctors who wake up at 6 and work till 11 in the night okay so that is also there but if you don't want to work you can always uh, you know uh, close your clinic and so it depends on how many how many hours depends on how you want to take it so did your doctor do cesarean without anesthesia doctor see right now that's what there are lots of medical legal i have seen uh, dgo doctors do, uh, giving anesthesia and uh, doing the surgery also if everything is well and good nothing happens but uh, if things go wrong you know uh, then uh, medical legal it becomes an issue so nowadays uh, anesthesia where people like people do they are uh, uh, i mean to see uh, with so much of super specialty and you know specialties coming up i wouldn't know much myself about anesthesia anesthesia anesthetic medications i know just what i read in ndbs after that now for 15 years i don't know which medicine is there. so i would definitely not give anesthesia to any to anyone okay so i mean i've seen people in rural areas do it but definitely not advisable dgo doctor can do cesarean 
without anesthesia doctor is very risky okay ma'am ma'am uh, what um, like other than the medical knowledge that they have to go through or uh, the subjects that they choose to what makes a good uh, pediatrician can you give some true like some lights exactly to that uh, students exactly on the panel i think you have to be um, uh, have a lot of patience because uh, student because when children come this i mean when they are well and happy no problem but when they sick they are irritable and you know sometimes it takes a lot of time for us to examine so you know sometimes our uh, uh, consultation doesn't get over in 5 10 minutes it requires a lot of time especially like you spoke about behavioral problems so if there's there children who come with behavioral issues it takes quite some time to assess them you know sometimes half an hour one hour also okay so patience is the key to uh, be a pediatrician and you have to love children you have to uh, be student be a uh, be uh, child friendly also and uh, that's what you have to love them otherwise at that, like i told you there were some interns who came and said we are done with and don't want to come back ever because you know it requires a lot of patience you can't uh, i mean they will not cooperate uh, you have to elicit cooperation in them so that comes only with time and you have to love the subject So, uh, I didn't get you, man. Yeah, I said complete interaction, patient centered, completely interaction with the patient. Yeah, particularly. True. Yeah. So that is the challenging aspect of pediatrics. You don't uh, like you can't say a child lie down and he's not going to lie down flat. He's going to uh, him and he was uh, going to cling on to the mother. and you know you in between all that you have to get your work done you have to examine when he is uh, clinging on to it on to someone so you know you don't really uh, you have to finish your examination in a playful manner so that's the key to doing it what are other uh, so specialties that one can opt like other than the pediatrics as such can you tell us about some specialties uh, that we in can pediatrics yeah particularly in pediatrics you're saying yeah yeah like i said there are lots of super specialties like there is pediatric nephro uh, there are lots of hospitals which run fellowship programs and uh, there are also hospitals which uh, uh, do um, uh, dm okay dm is another uh, i think three or four okay there is neonatology so there is fellowship in neonatology there is dm in neonatology so pgi chandigarh has dm there are lots of places i think st john's has dm dm there are lots of places which now uh, offer dm in neonatology or if you don't want to spend 3 years uh, you can also do fellowship fellowship is also offered by many uh, many hospitals so you can do be a fellow and then work uh, as a neonatologist Uh, okay so neonatology is quite uh, i mean it's uh, relatively easy also i feel uh, just some basic uh, 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 like they are they restricted to few diseases and if you are good in it you are, you just uh, you do well but now the problem is there not a lot of neonatologists around so i don't know what is really the scope with lots of people at least in bangalore if you or else you have to go and practice in slightly rural areas maybe there be more scope in that case then after neonatology there's nephro there is endo there is gastroenterology pediatric gastroenterologists the uh, pediatric neurologists are there then uh, and the most uh, trendy one uh, is intensive care pediatric intensive care is there um yeah ma'am thank you so much for the information setting so